Portrait Artist of the Year, Professional or Amateur? Let's talk about this and we can finally put this issue to rest as we go forward with more recaps. And if you would consider it, please give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Let's get started. Also at the end, I forget my tagline, I forgot to say it, which is leave the whites of your paper white and your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Whites of your paper white, because as a watercolorist, if you lose those whites, you cannot get them back. And keep your paints wet, because if you keep your paints wet, it means you're painting every day. Now let's go ahead with what I found out when I did a deep dive about the difference between a professional and an amateur when considering this program. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. As you know, I've been recapping Portrait Artist of the Year and also Landscape Artist of the Year. We're just finishing up Season 5, Portrait Artist of the Year, and I'm about to recap Episode 10, which is the finals. That's the most exciting episode of them all. But throughout this, I've been asking the question of why do they have amateurs and professionals competing against each other? Because that's not the model they have for the Great British Baking Program which is all amateurs. You cannot have made money from your baking endeavors before entering the program. So I thought, well, first what I need to do, and I did make a script for this, but I enjoy just talking to you instead. That's, that's what we do, right? So I asked on Facebook and some other places the opinions of people and not just not just artists. I'm, we're talking about musicians are artists, and and cake decorators are artists, and woodworkers are artists. I mean, they're all kinds of artists. And so my question was, I have to fix something here. Oh, it's okay. So my question was, what what do you consider an amateur? What do you consider a professional? Well, there were very far extremes. One was, if you're a professional, you make your entire living by uh, producing and selling your art, all the way to if you're an amateur. You know, you're not take, you, you have fun, you might paint occasionally, but uh, and you don't sell. So, those are two very, very far extremes. One person responded by saying the IRS counts you as being a professional artist if you make 51% of your income from your art. Interesting, but I think most of us fit somewhere along that continuum where we take our art very seriously and we do sell paintings and that we do show paintings, participate in different um, local organizations as well as state organizations or maybe even national organizations. You know, that's part of it too. It's not just what you produce, but how can you support your community and other people. We also tend to teach from time to time too, if not, uh, actually, I, I do not happen to know a professional artist who does not teach as well even though most of the time now that teaching is done on the internet. So I thought, all right, now we've kind of established that it's a mushy kind of place to decide which is an amateur, which is a professional. So I thought, but what about the program? How do they determine what an amateur and a professional is? And so I went into the internet and I thought, well, the best place to go for the most reliable information would be go directly to the application process. So I went to the application for 2024 this year. Uh, the applications will be closed in the first week of February. So if you wanna apply, you gotta go and do it, but you have to have lived in the uh, United Kingdom for two years. And on the uh, application, is listed all the criterion that you have to do. Oh my gosh, it is just so intense. I can't imagine, I can't, cannot imagine putting myself through this process. You have to be available on the dates that they, that they specifically talk about. You have to, um, they do give you a stipend if you are gonna be staying overnight because you know most people at least stay the night before you would think. And then when it comes to travel to London, they only offer a 25 pound stipend to travel from London, which is great if you live in London, not great if you live in the Shetland Islands. <laughs> you, you, gotta, you gotta pay some bucks to get to the venue. So that was interesting to me. The other thing that I did not know is that they do have backup painters. Backup painters, so you can be shortlisted for that. And those are people that are standing by in case someone gets ill or someone uh, doesn't obey the rules. 
So that's interesting. I don't know where they are when they're filming the program, but evidently there are some people, uh, other folks um, in the painting that we, we're not aware of. Or maybe they've cut it, uh, you know, edited it and cut it in such a way that it's just seamless and we don't know that. But I found that very interesting too. Of course, like any reality program, you have to sign your uh, creative work away. You know, they own what you do during the program. I, I don't think that's a surprise at all. That is just the nature of a reality program. And the reason to go on a reality program is either, you know, you, you want to be on TV or because you, you want to enhance your career with some name recognition. I can't think of any other reasons to do it. So all of that was very interesting to me. And I thought, I'm not so sure now that I'm going to track who's an amateur and a professional. Oh, I forgot the main reason for why I'm probably not going to track who's an amateur and who's a professional. Not because there isn't a perfect consensus, but because on the application process itself, it only has a box and you mark if you're a professional and you mark if you're an amateur. They don't have any criterion for how to make that decision. So you are self-described. So if I was entering the program, I would check that I was a professional. I don't know, maybe on a day I wasn't feeling so great about my art, I might check I'm an amateur. I don't know. But there actually is no measure that the program has for whether you're an amateur or professional. And I thought that was interesting since absolutely everything else that they expect of you in terms of outcomes and your input is so explicit. So that answers my questions about what is the difference between an amateur and a professional when it comes to this program specifically. And that in the end probably was my, my main question. But I think my bigger question got answered, which is at the end of the day, I think we probably all self-describe to some extent and decide which we are. Oh, I have one more thing to say about that. I remember once where um, I, I still didn't consider myself an artist, right? And I was, uh, I was at the bank and I, I think it, it, it probably had something to do with a loan or something. I can't remember. But the, uh, the person asked me, well, what do you do? You know, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a painter. <laughs> and they said, they said, oh, I need some painting done in my house. Um, I need my living room and my dining room done and perhaps the outside this summer. And I thought, Oh, okay. I've been in denial about this. I'm not a painter. I really have to self-describe and say I'm an artist. And to be more specific now, I say I'm a watercolor artist because I own it. And I only realized in that conversation that I still considered myself. I couldn't say I was an artist. I was saying I was a painter. And there's some confusion about that, understandably. Anyway, it was hilarious when it happened. So now I'm going to go on and recap the final episode of season five, which is such a good episode. Everybody is such a good painter. And as we know, in the final episode, um, the commission piece will be to paint Sir Tom Jones. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So remember to keep the white sheet paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.